So now let's try to solve the recurrence relation that we saw, right? T of n equals to 2 times T of n by 2 plus some order of n, right? So how do we solve this? Right. So there is, there is something called as a recursion tree method. There is something called as a recursion tree method, which is a very simple and intuitive way to solve recurrence relations like this, right? First, we'll do it intuitively. In the next sections, we'll also go into the details of recursion, recursive tree method, and there's something called as a master method, etc. right? We'll go into them later, but let's try to understand the intuition behind it, right? Suppose, imagine if I have an array of size n, I'm breaking it up into size, arrays of size n by 2 and n by 2, right? And to merge these two, and to merge these two, I'm taking order of n, right? I'm basically taking order of n, right? So you're breaking, I'm not writing the tn here, just for simplicity. There's no point writing t, 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 okay? So the recursion tree method, okay? I'll, say, I'll explain you why it's called the recursion tree method, the word tree here. Now we break this up into arrays of size n by 4 and n by 4, right? Again, n by 4 and n by 4. Now if you look at it, to merge, to merge all of them, to merge these two, right? To merge these two, what is the time complexity to merge these two? It is the summation of both of them, right? Because to merge two arrays of size n by 2, n by 2, it took order of n. So if, because we are just summing them up, right? So let's write order of n just for simplicity instead of writing order of n because order notation can be tricky. Let's write it as some constant into n, right? That's what order of n is, right? Some constant into n, intuitively thinking about it. Now, if you have two arrays of size n by 4, n by 4, to merge both of them, you would need some constant multiplied by the sum of n by 4, n by 4, which is n by 2, right? So this, this c into n by 2 is the time complexity to merge these two subarrays. Now, what about merging these two subarrays? It will also be c into n by 2, right? So the total thing is going to be c into n. Now, let's, let's go further. Let's assume this is again broken up into two subarrays of size n by 8, n by 8. This is also broken up into n by 8, n by 8, broken up into n by 8, n by 8, right? This is also broken up into n by 8, n by 8. Now, to merge these two arrays of sizes n by 8, n by 8, how much time would it take? It's order of n by 8 plus n by 8, which is n by 4, right? So, right, let's write it as constant, c into n by 4 plus, to merge these two, c into n by 4, some constant c into n by 4 plus c into n by 4, right? So the first c into n by 4 is for this, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, which is again c into n, right? So I can just erase this and say, I can just erase this whole thing and say, the time complexity to merge at each stage in this tree. So this looks like a tree, right? Like a pine tree, right? So this is c into n, this is, 2 into c n by 2, which becomes c into n. This is also c into n. We just saw it, right? Now comes the fun part. Now let's assume n is equal to 8. If n is equal to 8, n by 8 has become equal to 1. So this is an array of size 1, array of size 1, array of size 1, array of size 1. You can't go any further because if you look at this code, right, if you look at this code, if, if our arrays are of size 1, it doesn't break the array further. There is nothing to break. You'll just keep merging now, right? So you can't break this any further. Now, what is the total time complexity? Now let's look at it. What is the total time complexity that you needed to do all of this, right? Very simple. Now you have three, so you have three into C into N. C is a constant, but what about this three? This tree is basically the height of this tree. If you look at this height of the tree, okay? If you look at this, so this is a tree, right? This is like a tree. So the height of the tree is often defined as, this is called, so again, we'll learn about a data structure called tree in lots of detail later in this course, right? But if you look at what is the height of this, how many C into Ns will you have? Let's assume N equals to eight, right? So when n equals to 8, when n equals to 8, you will go down up to n by 8 because n by 8 will be equal to 1, which means you're going three levels down, right? So when n equals to 8, 
this recursion tree this recursion tree goes up to three levels now what happens when n equals to 16 when n equals 16 what happens i can further go right like because you have 16 16 gets broken down into 8 and 8 8 and 8 gets broken down into four fours this would get broken into two twos this would get broken down into one ones of course i have not written two two one 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 right again the same thing same thing here so if you have 16 how deep does this tree go how many levels does this tree go so if you ignore this first level this is one level two levels and three levels first ignore this just the the top level because you have n elements there if you have 16 what happens how many levels deeper you're going you're going one level deep two levels deep three levels deep four levels deep so you if you, if you have your n equals 16 you're going to go four levels deep right so if n equals to 16 you would get 4 into c into n right so let's write it down so you go three levels down which means your total type complexity is going to be 3 into c to n if n equals 16 you're going to get 4 into c into n if n equals to 32 right look at it if n equals to 32 what would happen okay your 32 would get broken down into okay let me just use a new page here your 32 would get broken down into 16 and 16 your 16 would get further broken down into 8 8 would get further broken down into 4s this would get broken down into 2s this would get broken down into 1s so one level two levels three levels four levels and five levels right so you would have five levels right so this is 5 into c into n so if you notice that there is there is something happening here right so your type complexity is some constant into n into something here 3 which is a function of n actually your 3 is not a constant here you got 3 here because of n equals to 8 right if your n was 16 you're getting 4 here if n equals to 32 you would get 5 here what does that mean doesn't this look like a function log of n base 2 right what is log of n so, so if log of n base 2 is equal to let's say x what does this mean this means 2 power x equals to n that's what it means right this is the definition of log right so if this is this is nothing but 2 power 3 this is nothing but 2 power 4 this is nothing but 2 power 5 right so if if the number of elements you have is 2 power 5 you're getting five levels and given n see given n how do you get five so you just take log of n base 2 isn't it so if somebody gives you suppose you want to find a function f right to which if you give 32 it should return 5 if you give 16 it should return 4 what is that function that function is nothing but the log function that's what log's definition is. That's a definition of log of base 2. Right? So this number that you have here, your 3, 4, 5 is nothing but log of n base 2. I'll just ignore the base 2 here. So whenever I write log n, if I don't say it's base 2 by default. Right? So the total time it's taking right now, right? Imagine if you have an array of size n, right? You would break it up into n by 2. You would break it up into n by 2 so on so forth you'll do it and the and the number of levels that you will have is nothing but log of n base 2 right and at every level you have c into n at the second level also you'll have c into n at the third level you'll have c into n so what is the total sum here it is c into n into log n right so when you solve this recursion tree or when you solve this recurrence relation, when you solve this recurrence relation, what do you get? T of n is equal to, the final result that you would get is T of n is equal to n into some constant into log of n base 2. Because if, you, if I just remove the constant, I can write it as order of, of course, big O. Okay, I can write it as big O of n into log n base 2. So which means in summary, where did we start all of this? With merge sort. We started this whole thing with merge sort. So the time complexity, the time complexity, the time complexity to sort using merge sort of n elements is order of n into 
log n base 2. Right? This is both the worst and the best case. What about the space complexity? What about the space complexity? The space complexity is order of n. Now, you should compare this with insertion sort. Let's see insertion sort. What happens to insertion sort? In insertion sort, my time complexity, my time complexity, worst case, and I have a best case. My best case is obviously order of n, but my worst case is order of n square, right? And my space complexity, and my space complexity is order of one. So what is happening here? Now, if you have to compare merge sort with insertion sort, right? If you think about it, my both worst case, so in the worst case, your insertion sort can be very slow. Your time complexity of merge sort is better than your merge sort, uh, your insertion sort's worst case time complexity, right? Of course, if everything is very good, insertion sort does a very good job, but you should always be prepared for the worst case also, right? So merge sort's time complexity is better than the insertion sort's time complexity, but merge sort's space complexity, because you're using order of an additional space, right? is worse than the space complexity of insertion sort. Okay, in a sum, in, in, in a nutshell, th that's what this is. Again, we'll compare all of the sorting algorithms, where we should use which sorting algorithm as we progress through this course, right? Because you have to make decisions like this a lot of times in the real world. What is the right sorting algorithm is a very important and interesting question, right? But I hope you understood the recurrence tree method. What I've given you is just, uh, or a recursion tree method to solve recurrence relations. This is a very simple intuitive way of understanding it, right? So you basically say, you basically keep going down the levels and at each level you say, what is your time complexity? And you sum all of them up. And what we got here is nothing but, uh, we got order of n log n base two, right? So we have seen order of n log n when we learned about the, when we learned about uh, big O notation, theta notation, etc., right? This is where it occurs. So merge sort is the first place where we learned and where we saw order of n log n like stuff to be present, not just n squares and n's.